the day. The blood of the animals, the, the, the sacrifices that are made, the Bible says, did not remove the consciousness of sin. And that struck me. It has to do with the consciousness of sin. So because of the consciousness of sin, man falls back into sin. Okay. He said the blood of the bulls and the cows and all that they could not remove. He said there is always, at the end, there is always a consciousness of sin. A consciousness of not being there with God. A consciousness of not being made right. Even after... The whole, uh, you sin, you take the bull, you take the animal to go and ask us. At the end of the year, they will call all your sins together, right? So, mm -hmm. why were you making all the sacrifice throughout the year? All the time you sin. Why is it at the end of the year you have to do that again? He said, because that, those sacrifices could not, could not remove the consciousness of sin. And I was like, okay. Then from that chapter... It now moves to chapter 11. Because it's talking about how that Jesus made an atonement for all of for us and all that and all that then. So then he began to talk about faith in chapter 11. I want to read from Hebrews, the last part of Hebrews chapter 10. Okay. The last part of Hebrews chapter 10. Okay. Where will I come from? Yeah. So it talked about, I want to read, I'll start from um, verse, is it verse 19 that I can see here? Yeah, I believe it's verse 19. I'll read from there. It said, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. So that means that all those other blood sacrifices could not make us enter into the holiest. You remember the temple, the tabernacle, is made of the holiest, the holy place, and the altar court. Now, it is only the high priest that could enter into the holiest of holies once in a year. Am I, am I right? Yes. So, we, everybody could not enter. Everybody could. And it is the holiest of holies, that particular place. That was where the real presence, that was where God was actually present. Mm. So, he said, we could not enter. Why? Because there was a consciousness of sin. Because the blood of God and animals could not remove that thing from us. Mm. Then, do you understand? Mm. He said, but now, with the blood of Jesus, we have the boldness to enter into this holiest of holies. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? He said, yes. by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through his, through, through the veil that is his flesh by his dying and having a high priest over the house of God. Let us draw near with a true heart full of assurance of faith. Ah, God, this is wonderful. He said, let us draw near with a true heart full of assurance of faith. That is without doubt that the blood of Jesus is enough. The blood of Jesus has paid the price for all. The blood of Jesus is powerful enough to keep us in the presence of God. This is what he's talking about. With the full assurance, we have to believe with the full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. What is that evil conscience? The consciousness of sin. You know, some of us, we are very, very holy. We are always talking about the sins that other people are committing, how that other people are not living right, how that other people, they are always living in sin. We are very conscious of sin. It's just like people that are always casting out demons. Demons will always manifest when you talk about demons. People that always say that children of God are possessed, so they are always conducting deliverances. A child of God has run away for 30 years. Say, oh, you are not making it. Things are not because you are possessed. How can he be possessed if he's truly born again? Where did the demon, demon enter into him? The demon and Jesus are living together in the same house. It doesn't make sense. 
So what happened? They begin to cast out devils. Say, ah, this man. Of course, demons will play around because you are magnifying them. But if you magnify God, God will also show up where you are. So this is what he's talking about. There, he said, having our sense from evil conscience and our body washed with pure water, which is the word of God. Our body was with. He said, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, without shaking. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope. Now, he said, in, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, at the end, he said, now these three things abide. Hope, faith, and love, right? Mm -hmm. Then uh, uh, in the book of Hebrews 11, he said, faith is the evidence of things hoped for. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in the book of Romans, he said, you do not hope for what you already see. You hope for what you do not see. That is how faith operates. Okay. So now he said that. Now let us hold fast. That is hold on tight. To the confession of our hope. Without shaking. Without any doubt. What is our hope? That the blood of Jesus has paid the price for us. For everything. For all times. Both now and the time to come. That the blood of Jesus. When he offered his blood. When he died on the cross. It was sufficient for everything that we'll ever need from God. Because the blood made a way for us to come into the presence, the most holy place, the holiest of holies, where before it was only the high priest that could go. Now, even the, the high priest could only enter there once in a year, and he had to be careful. But now, we don't have to be careful. The only carefulness we have to have is to... Is to Come with faith. Trust God that, yes, the blood of Jesus is enough. I don't know if I'm making sense to you. Yeah, 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 I'm getting it. The blood of Jesus is enough. We don't need any other thing. The blood of Jesus is enough. We should come with the full assurance of faith, in, you know, standing before God. Because God is no longer locked up in that place. He is now living in a standing before God, full of the assurance that God has not rejected us. God is not about to reject us. God is not about to cast us away. That God is not condemning us. Ha. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Okay, he said, now let us consider one another in order to stir up. I love this part. He said, and let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Sorry, let us consider one another. I want to look for another version that would, maybe they use another word, you know, instead of consider. And let, me read what I'm using here. It yeah. says, and let us consider one another to provoke to love. And to good work. Mm. Yeah, is that word consider that I want to see if they use another word to, to express consider? You know? Say, let us consider. I want to look if there's another word, any other version used. You know? Ah, Jesus. Uh, that's verse 24. Verse 24, verse 24, verse 24. Say, discover creative ways to encourage others and to motivate them. You know, he, he said, he said, and let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Okay? That's New King James. But this Passion Bible translated this way. He said, discover creative ways. Discover creative ways to encourage others. And to motivate them towards acts of compassion, doing beautiful works as expression of love. Not condemning them. Not looking for ways to tell them that they are not doing right. They are not living right. Or this, that. He said, discover, consider, discover creative ways to encourage them. Discover ways to motivate them towards doing things that are right. Discover ways to motivate them towards doing the works of compassion. Okay? Yeah. That's what. And they said, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some, but exhorting one another. What is that exhortation? Encouraging, building, rebuking in love, correcting in love with the word of God. 
and so much so as you see the day approaching. Okay, and from there it now moves on. On it goes on and on. But from there, I don't want to read the others when he talked about that. He moves on and says, verse 11, chapter 11, he goes on to say, Now faith is the substance. Because if you read all of them, going on, on to the end of it, verse, uh, verse 39 of that uh, chapter 10, say, But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. Verse, 11, verse, verse 1 of chapter 11, Now faith is. Now faith is. And I said, Lord, what is the relationship between this chapter 10 and chapter 11? Why do we move immediately to the discussion of faith? Because at the end of the day, the whole book of Hebrews from chapter 1 verse 1 is talking about trusting God. And as I began to meditate on this, I discovered that when you say you trust God, it is cooperation with God. It is an agreement with God. There is a place it says something here that I want to bring out. Yes, I want to read verse 35. Are you there? Yes, ma'am. 35 of, of chapter 10. Okay. I want to read from verse 35 of chapter 10. He said, Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, that you may receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. No, that's not where it is. There's a place it says that for he who has promised. Ah, Holy Spirit, that means there's a place there. Mm, mm, I don't want to go there. Ba, 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 ba. Da, 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 da. That is without mercy, that is supposed to be all the other. You said you for the promise. Yes. It's in about it's 23 now. Yes, let's it's go back there, verse 23. Yes, promise. thank you, thank you, verse 23. He said, okay, let us hold that. For he who, who promised is faithful. Do you understand? That means if God has promised anything, if he has promised that when you give your life to him, you are his son from that moment. God is faith, he will stick by you. When God says, when you give your life to Christ, you truly receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And he says that if when you do that, you are a new creation, all things are passed away. And that he has accepted you as his son, adopted you as his son. Is there any other thing you need to do to make him accept you? No. Is there any other sacrifice? Is there any other thing that you need to do to become more like a child of God? No. That is what I'm trying to say. And now, so if there's nothing more you need to do, why do we put ourselves in bondage in saying so many things? You know, sometimes I just, okay, if you don't give this offering, God will not give you this. If you don't do, these things are all wrong. They are good. If, Okay, let me use destiny for example. Destiny is growing now. Let me oh. use let me use your mom. When you went home, your mom, did you need to give your mom money for her to cook for you? No. No, oh, it was a good pleasure. Even though you had you may have more money than her, you want to give to her. But you see, the little she had, because you are a child, it was a great pleasure to enter the kitchen, to use the little, to provide for you, because that is our pleasure. You don't need to do anything to qualify for that. Do you understand? This is what I'm trying to say, that as children of God, we have to rest assured, we have to work with God with that faith that we work with our mothers, with our parents. Yes, this is where I'm going to. Knowing that we don't have to do anything to merit their love. What qualifies us for their love is that we are, we are their children. And that qualifies us for their provision for us. Oh, God. Oh, God. Do you understand what I'm saying? What qualifies me for God to provide, for Jehovah Jireh to show up for me? It's not that I have to fast and pray for God to do it. I don't have to, to break my head, cry, weep, 
I, I have to understand that it is his pleasure. He is my father and it is his pleasure to provide for me. And I have to walk in that consciousness. Do you understand what I'm saying? I have to walk in, in, I have to walk. When I go out, I shouldn't be looking over my shoulder to see if he will give his angels charge over me. Oh, Lord. I was saying that as his child, I don't, when I go out, I have no, that's what we need to know God for ourselves. We need to know what God has for us. It's like your child have to know what property you have and what you can offer the child so that it, you will know what to lay claim to, okay? Yeah. We need to know what God has that we may be able to lay claim to. Now, in laying claims to this, we do not have to begin to weep and cry for God to give us what he has already given us. We only have to lay claim to it, cash the check. For us to be able to do that, when we talk about faith, is for us to be in agreement with God, believing and knowing, accepting and walking in the consciousness that this is what God has said. This is this God is faithful that has spoken, that has promised. Because he has spoken his word, he says his word will not return to him void. He does not give and then he takes back what he has given. He has said that when you receive Jesus, you become my son, you become my daughter, you become my own. He bring, you come into his family, you become a member of his family. God is under obligation. He is under obligation to provide for his household. If God says that you are not a faithful man if you do not provide for, his house, for your household, how much more him that is God? Why will he not provide for his household? That was why Jesus said that. How will he not? With the whole you know, give you the Holy Spirit. Well, it is his good pleasure. I, I, I don't know if I'm making sense to you. I don't know if I'm coming. Uh -huh. I'm trying to bring this thing because the thing is just rolling up in my spirit and I realize that there are so many places where we have missed it. There are so many places where we think that we knew it and we, we have preached the wrong message. The truth is this. We just have to understand that you are a child of God. It is God's pleasure to bless you. It is God's pleasure to provide for you. It is his duty. Echo. And God has not failed in that duty in provision. God has not failed. Hey, this is the Victoria. It is not true that if I do not give my offering, God will not give to me. Oh, do you mean to say that because destiny will not give you money, you will not provide for him? No, tell me. Tell me. My mother, the, uh, even now that we give to her, if I call my mother and say, oh, my sister is coming, go to, buy me this, buy me this on the market, I won't send her money. No. She'll say, ah, because you did not send me money, you are not my child, I can't provide for you. No, I don't even ask her, she will call me. Your sister is coming back, what do you want me to buy for you? I have small money, anyhow I will manage. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. If my mom dies, a human being can do that. How much more God? We have deceived ourselves for so long and missed, messed up this word of God so long. That is why we have lived in lack, in want, and in stupidity. Father, deliver us. Am I making sense to you? Am I making sense to you? So, when he began to say in the book of Hebrews 11, when he began to talk in Hebrews 11, now, faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It means that even though you have not seen what God is providing with for you in the physical eye, just like you do not see the certificate of your being a child of God with your physical eyes, he said, but because you believe, it become the evidence, your claim, your, your check to enter into the supermarket and collect whatever you want, your voucher. Faith is that voucher you take with you and you enter into the supermarket of God and you pick whatever you want and you pay. 
Ah, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. You know, like now in, in UK, you know, some children used to go to school and they eat in school. Now they have to stay at home and their parents have to provide that and they don't have no. So the government is giving three, three pounds to each child every day. They said they are going to give three, three pounds. You know, the food that they ought to have eaten in school that they are not eating at home that the parents have to provide. So mm -hmm. it is a voucher. It is not raw cash. They will give them the voucher. So the parents will take that voucher, go to the supermarket. Ah, it's like all these Aduro people, they give them voucher to go to the supermarket. Is it not so? Mm -hmm. And some of them, they'll tell them there are certain supermarkets you cannot cash that voucher. You have to go to the right supermarket. Now, there is a faith supermarket that you have to take faith voucher from God to take it to. Now, you will not get what you want if you take the, the word of God, the faith of God, and you go to the wrong supermarket. Of course, you will not cash anything because they will not cash it. But when you take it to the supermarket of God, where God has said, this is it, and you carry your faith and you go there in the word of God that this is it, you will collect what you want. You will collect what you want. You will collect what you want. God did not ask me when I gave my life that I should come and pay him money. Am I saying that we shouldn't give to the work? No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying that that is not the basis of his saving me. That is not the yardstick by which he blesses me. Because if you read on, let me show you why Abraham was blessed. He said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. He said, for by it, by faith. The elders obtained a good report. Now, by faith, we understand that the words were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which are visible. Hmm. Yeah. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, hmm. through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gift and through it and through it he being dead still speaks by faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him hmm. for before he was taken he had this testimony that he pleased God hmm. he said, but without faith it is impossible to please him For he that believe, he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. God is a rewarder. You must believe that God is a rewarder. It is not what you do that God is going to reward. It is your faith, your trust in him that God rewards. That is why no matter what we do, he said anything that is done without faith, he said, God is not going to give it back to you. No matter what you do, without faith, it's not going to, there's no reward. And what is that faith? That faith is agreeing with God. Telling God, I agree with you. That what you have said is true and that you are able to do it, no matter how this situation looks like. Now, coming back to what I was saying at the beginning, when do we have faith in God? Is it now, I was saying to somebody, I don't know who I was telling, I don't know if I also told to the people. It is not when the war has started that you start buying weapons of warfare it's like most countries now they are in trouble why because they were not prepared for this time a lot of hospitals is beginning to show that they never had the right equipment to be working under normal circumstances because when you talk about all this equipment that they are saying they don't have they don't have the ppe personal protection equipment all these masks all these uh, 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 gloves and everything these are things that they should have in abundance under normal circumstances and they didn't even have enough for their day-to-day -day activities. It is not that they are looking for. Of course, it will be difficult for them to have. They should have a stock of it so that when there is a calamity, when there is an urgent need for many of them to have it, they will have enough. But because they never even had enough for everyday use, now they have difficulty producing. 
in the time of war. It is not when war has started that you start going to look for weapons, which is what we are doing right now. So also, it is not when there is trouble you begin to look for faith. How do I say that? When trouble comes, that is what people will be like, oh, pray, oh, pray, oh, may God do this, you know, let God do this, you know. Is it not that you begin to panic? You should have prayed and be rest assured that in the days of trouble, he that has said he will never leave you nor forsake you, he is not going to leave you when the calamity starts. So there's no need for you to panic. That was why the three Hebrew boys said that we are not careful in this matter. They did not panic. I don't know if you are making sense, so... Oh. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? It is not when things are in our begin to say, ah, shall we pray? Please pray. Ah, man. Oh, please pray. I'm doing this. No, no, no. Oh, please pray. Let God. Ah, may God help us. No, 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 no. This is not the time. You, what you are doing is you are going to buy equipment for war in the time of war. You are not going to get it. The war will pass. You may even lose it. You are not going to get it. But before that war, if you are equipped, when issue comes, you say, watch, I, I will not fear. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the Lord is with me. And then you walk in peace. That does not mean that the storm will not rage. But it shows one thing. That you are going to come out. And when you are done with it. According to Isaiah 43. That even the scars. They will not see it on you. Nobody will know that you went through that trouble. It will not smell on you. Nobody will even remember. Because it was with you. How many people remember. When the Hebrew boys came out. Did they even remember whether the fire was hot? Did they see the scars on them? Yeah, this is what I'm trying to say. Oh my Lord, help me. He said, I want to get to where Abraham is. Now verse 7, he said, By faith, Noah, being divinely one of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, <sighs> prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became the heir of righteousness, which is according to faith. You know, sometimes, we say we trust God and God will ask us to do some things and then we begin to reason it out and we discover that this thing sounds very foolish and we say we have to use wisdom. What wisdom did Noah used when there was nothing like rain? It has never happened. He began to, you know, when I was reading it the other day and I was just, yes, yesterday I was reading it. I just sat and I imagined how much people would have laughed when they saw him building a gigantic boat on the dry land. He was not building on the sea. He was building a boat on the dry land. Is that not foolishness in the highest? You are not living close to the sea. And you are building a boat. You say rain is going to fall. And you are not just building a small You are building a mighty ark of three-story building. Where is the water going to come that will make you float? He said, God told you. God told you. This is utter foolishness. But you know, he believed God. Do you see that? He did not reason it out. He did not try to use wisdom. <laughs> Which is what we are using to deceive ourselves because we now apply man's wisdom and we call it God's wisdom. Verse 9, 8, if I may say, say, By faith, Abraham, the famous man of faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he will receive as an inheritance. And then he went out, not knowing where he was going. God called him and said, go. He didn't even know where he was going. How foolish is that? How can somebody tell you? He said, God called you. Where did God call you? God tell you to go. I don't God said I should go. Go where? He said I should start going to that side. Now, if you are going that way, where are you going to go? I don't know. Does it make sense? Hello? Hello, Mom. Yeah. Does it make sense? When, Hello, you, Mom, hearing you. when you say, okay, God told me to go. Go where? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? He said, God must. You know, this is another thing that we are doing in the body of Christ today. He said, oh, if God sent you somewhere, he must tell you where. He didn't tell Abraham where. But Abraham left. He only told him, Abraham moved. Abraham got up, looked right, left. He said, let me go right. And he started going. And God was watching him. He said, where are you going? He said, I don't know. God said I should leave my father's house and leave my mother's house. So I have left the house. 
That is the first step. Where is God taking you? I don't know. God said I should leave. Okay, where are you now going? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? How can God not tell you where you are going? God is not like that. God is not like that. Of coffee. We start quoting, quoting, quoting. Look at it. Oh. God did not tell Abraham, yeah, oh. He didn't even tell him how long. He didn't tell him where. You know, some like, like I was saying some people, I said, God laid in my heart to call them to do some things. The next question they were asking, uh, how long? I said, my dear, forget. The first question you should ask if you are of God, and I know, is that when, as a child of God, you are told God has led you to do something, the first thing you say, can I pray about it? No. That's question number one. Or you say, yes, that is something I'm interested in because you, you asked to pray about it because you are not connected. You should have been connected. Then, if you are connected, the next thing you say, oh, that you, when you hear that call, it is something you say, oh, yes, that is something that has been in my heart. But just let me confirm. Do you understand? But when you begin to ask other questions, you know that that person is not in the spirit. Neither will the person come to do that thing because the person has disconnected from God. Abraham didn't know where God was taking him to. Let us read on. He said, and he went out not knowing where he was going. I love that. He didn't know. He was going like Mumu or there. So people will tell you that the fact that you are a Christian doesn't mean you should be your dead, that God does not tell you to go where he does not tell you. <laughs> Look at it, the Abraham of faith was a classical order. He said, by faith he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign land, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city which has foundation, whose builder and maker is God. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed. And she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful. This is where I want to say. He said, he said she judged him faithful who has promised. So faith is about judging God faithful. Faith is about saying, God, I know you are faithful because you have said it. You maintain your word. You are a man of your word. You do not go back of your, on your word. Whatever you say, you do. So I trust you stupidly. Whether I'm seeing the result or not, whether people are laughing at me or not, all I know is that because you have said it, you will do it. And I agree with you, God. I agree with you, Father, that you will do it. Whether others believe or they don't believe. Uh -huh. I want to read verse 13 and I will stop there. It said, these all died in faith, not having... These all died in faith, not having received the promises. Nowadays, we want to receive our promises. They say, no, <laughs> I must eat everything here before I go. <laughs> so not having received the promises but having seen them afar off we are assured of them embrace them and confess that they were strangers and pilgrims on earth on the earth what I just want us to understand today is this that when we say when we say we have faith in God we are saying that we agree with God. We are saying that we accept the word of God that he has said. We are saying that we can't God as being truthful. That because he has said it, we also say yes and it will come to pass. So it, is, it doesn't matter whether it is a time of peace or war. That word stands sure. And because the word stands sure, when... Trouble comes. When trouble comes, we are not shaken. We can only be shaken if God is not with us. I, I, do you understand what I'm saying? I want to bring a scenario. Maybe you are going with your child, and then there is danger, and your child, uh, 
as a child when you were growing up and you are going with an elderly person, as long as that elderly person is with you, you are not afraid of any danger. Then suddenly there is danger and you turn around. The elderly person is not there to protect you. What do you do? You begin to shout, help, help. Is it not so? Mm -hmm. But when you turn around, the person is there. What do you do? You just sit there and say, ah, my brother or my sister, ah, sister, you can do it. You can. You begin to hail and praise that person to do and defend you. Is it not so? But what do, do we, children of God, that trust in God, that have faith in God as an elderly person that is with us? When trouble comes, we begin to shout, Oh God, where are you? Why has that forsaken us? Meanwhile, God is there standing looking at us. Well, what we should do is to say, Oh Father, ha -ha, this is where you are showing your power. Lord, thank you because I'm not afraid. I have my backbone with me. And then you continue to walk boldly towards that fire. You walk through it. You walk out of it. Why? Because you know he's with you. Nothing can happen to you. But do we do that? No. That is when we begin to shout. Oh God. Oh God. Help us. Which kind of trouble be this? I never see this. We begin to say all kinds of things. Except agree with God that God is with us. We say all kinds. We do all kinds. Except agreeing with God that God is with us. So how do we expect to walk in faith? How can we claim that that is faith? I think we need to re-examine what we call faith, what we call trust in God. Like my nephew Alessandro, whenever there is anything, there, there are issues that all he does, he will call me. He knows that when he calls me, is going to be resolved. It doesn't matter how he presents the case to me. He can call me shouting. It doesn't matter. But he knows that that particular issue, the only person that he can talk to at that time is me. He doesn't even ask me if he can talk. He just call me and he starts talking. He doesn't even... Why? Because he trusts that I will handle the issue. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Uh -huh. It is not... In that particular time of trouble, he's, he, he's, he has no doubt that if Auntie Joseph handles it, there will be peace, there will be calm. So he doesn't bother to call anybody else. He doesn't bother to seek it. He calls me. And I know. Am I always ready? Yes! Whether I'm ready at that moment or not, I'm always ready. That is how it is with God. God is always ready because he's never far from us. He's always with us. So when it happens and you turn, don't turn to God to say, oh God, help. Oh. No, turn to God and say, God, all right, it is time now. Go on. I trust you. I agree with you. This is it. This is what you have been saying. Oh, thank you, Father, because you have won it. And as we are doing it, we are walking and going forward. We are not careful. We are not mindful of this matter. We are not careful, O Nebuchadnezzar. Whether our God will save us or not, we know that our God is bigger. We are going forward. Huh. That is faith. That is faith. That is trusting God. Very blindly. No wisdom of man applied. Just the trust yeah. of God. No wisdom. Because we have developed a lot of little, little phrases that sounds very Christian, but actually they are tricks of the devil from the pit of hell to take away our trust in God and put it in ourselves mm -hmm. or in man or in things. That was why I said, let us talk about faith. What is faith? When should we have faith? When should we be ready for war? Is it when the war has started or long before the war has started? When should we gather food for winter? Is it when winter has started or when there is summer and it is time for harvest? It is long before now that we have to be ready. This is not the time to begin to pray prayers of fear. It is the time to begin to declare the word of God. This is the time that the Bible talks about that they that know their God. This is what we was talking about. Shall be strong and do exploit. What is it be strong? It is declaring that God is faithful. It is agreeing with God in the position where it seems as if he is not there. But you know it is not because you can see him. It is because you have an understanding. It is because of that relationship, your trust in him that he is with you. And you begin to declare that and you do it and you walk it. That is faith. It is not that you have to know where God is sending you to. But the fact that God said move, then you begin to move. Whether others believe what you are saying or not. He said move and Abraham moved. Where are you going? I don't know. Where did God tell you that you are going? I don't know. What did God say he's going to do? I don't know. He only told me one word. 
leave your father's house. And I'm, I've left my father's house. But how can God tell you you should leave your father's house? And he doesn't tell you where you are going to. Wait, 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 wait. I will begin to talk. Hey, brother, say, hey, you can say what I say. I know that the God that told me, say, I should leave my father's house and my wife. Okay, did he tell you to go to the east or west? He didn't tell me where to go. He said, I should leave. So I just left. Maybe as I'm going on the way, we tell me whether to go right or left. But first of all, let me obey that order of leave. Do you get it? Hmm. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what others are saying. It doesn't matter what others say. It doesn't matter even matter what happened. The issue is God said move, and I have moved. And it took him time before God even told him. Even the place he was going, he got there, came back. God see did not enter the land. God was watching. Then God started making all promises to him. He still didn't tell him where he was going. At the end of the day, when God told him, said that, but it is not in your time that you will live in that place. <laughs> so you carry me, come on for my papa has comfort and everything that I could have been king, blah, 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 to come and make me a stranger, a pilgrimage, uh, immigrato. Uh, what do they call them? Straniero. <laughs> in another man's life. Based on what promise? A promise that you will give me a child and my wife is barren. What kind of God are you? But Abraham said, God, you know what? You are faithful. I stick by you. It doesn't matter what. The, so when, when, when uh, Job, uh, what's his name? Lot decided to go, he said, Lot, 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 Lot. Choose, choose. Lot decided to make a choice. Abraham still was not making a choice because God had not told him where he was going. That was why Abraham did not say, okay, uh, Lot, you know what? God is telling me to go to the east, so you go to the west. No, he said, Lot, anywhere you want to choose, choose, because God did not tell him where he was going. <laughs> so if you are going right, I will go left. If you go left, I will go right. Anywhere, if you go north, I go south. Just choose wherever you want to go, and I will go the other way so that we don't cause wahala. Because wherever direction I go, God will meet me there and now finally tell me where I'm going. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? He didn't, he didn't, but he was not concerned about the direction. He was not concerned about, he was only concerned about doing what God has said at that particular time, which is move. Which is leave your father's house. And he left. So every other, until God tells him, this is the next step, he just was not interested in anything else. He just kept walking and going and going and going and going. So when you get to God, he will say, sit down there. Okay, 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 no problem. Do you, do, do you understand why Abraham is the father of faith? Do you understand why he was a friend of God like that? Because he, he, he just followed God blindly. And uh, then think of the fact that God that told him, after giving him the child of promise, that same promise, that same child of promise, that same seed that God has been telling him for over 25 years, suddenly God said he should go and kill that seed. Abba. I rest my case. Hello. I said I rest my case. Hello. I can hear you. Please, can you go back? Can you go back a little bit? Where did you hear last? Yeah, yeah, last was when you were when he had lot. When Abraham said that lot should. Ah, you miss a lot. I have to go back again. Jesus. Please, ma. Now I was saying that when God told. And when uh, 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 there was trouble between Lot and Abraham's uh, 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 servant, because God did not tell Abraham, this is where you are going, remember? Mm -hmm. He was not concerned about direction. He was not concerned about possession. He was concerned about obey obedience, about doing that. So his own case was, if I go right to, if I go right and it is not right, God is telling me to go. God will tell me when I get to the place. Turn back, go this way. Because he has not told him this is where you are going. So it was not his because That was why he told, okay, Lot, you want to go left, I will go right. You want to go right, I'll go left. You want to go north, I'll go south. You want to go south, I'll go. You just choose wherever you want to go. Because the, what God told me was leave your father's house. He didn't tell me go right or left. He didn't tell me the land. Oh. So he was not really concerned about that or the property or their thing. He was concerned about obey, obeying God. Mm -hmm. That was all that was on his mind. 
So when Lot chose to go to the side he went to, Abraham continued in the direction that he had left. Knowing that whatever direction, God will meet him there. So when God begins to tell us to do this, let us follow God. Let us trust him. This is why he, he was the father of faith. This is why he became a friend of God because he loved God. He obeyed God blindly, foolishly. And then to crown it all at the end of the day. After promising and promising and promising, God gave him the seed. Then that same seed, God said, go and kill him. Abba. Mm. You mm. see, Abraham had learned to follow God so blindly that when God said, go and kill your son, he said, okay, no problem. He was not... It, it, was it because he didn't care about Isaac? No. He just, he just cared more about obeying this God that has been taking him. He cared more about trusting, you know, telling God, yes, you are right all the time. That God, you are right all the time. That God, you know what is best for me all the time. He has sinned because the other times he tried to do his own way, the mistakes he made, Ishmael and all that. So he has learned not to even try it anymore. Mm -hmm. He has learned to see that when God told him to leave, God didn't say leave with Lot. And he took Lot. He saw the issue, what the problem that came out of Lot going with him. Maybe if he had left Lot in his father's land, Lot would not have ended up in Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. He has learned mm -hmm. over the years that every extra that he has taken, he, all, the only thing that actually worked perfectly is if he just followed God without the extras that he developed himself. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I rest my case for now that trusting God, having faith in God, is agreeing with God and telling God that he's faithful and just obeying like you do with the military. The military guys don't question their orders; they just obey. Trusting them to give them the right order. That's how it is with God. And God will not give you the wrong order. I rest my case. I rest my case. Faith is agreeing. Faith is agreeing with God that that God is faithful. That God is faithful. And that what he says. And that what he says. He will surely do. Do. So there's no need to panic. Mm. 